Right, oh, good day, guys. Welcome back. Um, I've been having a lot of questions about this EVA flooring that I've laid in the Fruza F16, and I wasn't really going to do a video about this, but since I've got a bit more to do, I thought I'd give a quick demonstration on how I prep the surfaces, cut the um, cut the floor out, and also some other products that are available. Um, I've done this to about three boats now. Oh, probably more than that. Three of my own boats and some of the work boats and I highly recommend doing it. It's quiet, it's warm, it's comfortable, looks the part, and you can actually protect your boat by doing so. There's heaps of different stuff on the market. Um, this was on my last F14, Fruza F14. This is an Ultralon product, um, and they have a Christchurch in Auckland warehouse from memory. Um, they've got a whole bunch of other stuff. I've actually got a sample pack that I'll run you guys through later on, um, but this is the one that I selected for my last boat. So this has all their or most of their products and it doesn't have their teak but you can ask for that um, but it just gives you an idea of patterns and durability that's a really good hard one the Octi grip that's the same as this but just a different pattern um, and then you go into more like softer foams um, you've got like a black ribbed one which I think DNA boats use something very similar to that um, camo <laughs> and other ribbed one there see so they all vary in thickness that's a nice thick one as well those ones there almost double the thickness of those so there's a lot on the market and um, it's worth shopping around and finding something that you like and something that's durable this is an NZ rubber and foam product and this is a bit thinner this is about three mil um, and it's not that hard wearing very soft and to be honest I wasn't really a fan of it and the stuff I've gone for on this boat is another NZ rubber and foam product. And this is a Fotec V deck. So it's got the V groove um, routed out. There's imitation EVA teak flooring on like the likes of AliExpress, Wish, you know, all those um, Chinese import sites. I opted to go local. Um, one, because I could see the product, feel it, test it. But also, if I ever need uh, replacement sheets in the future, I know where I can get it from. So um, that's one good, good reason to support your local. So I did this boat with two sheets. Pretty much laid this everywhere. Um, I'm still yet to do the gunnels, so I'll run you guys through doing those. But I've got it all up the sides, along the back, on the boarding platforms, um, all over the floor. I haven't gone underneath the fuel tanks at the back because um, petrol will destroy this stuff. So keep that in mind where you're laying it. If you're going to be getting petrol in that area or fuel in general, you're best not to lay it in that area because it will um, turn brittle and peel up. And it comes all the way up the front, all the way up on the dash here. And also in the anchor well, which stops um, metal on metal contact from the galvanized chain, which can cause corrosion. So it just protects that and um, makes it a bit quieter so the chain's not bouncing around in there, also up the front. I've also laid some on the trailer steps where you step onto the trailer. And mind the mess, but these are the offcuts. So you can see from two sheets there is very minimal offcuts. And that's partly due to good planning, but also not making any mistakes. Measure multiple times, cut once and plan out your cuts on your sheet before you start cutting out. So what I actually did with this is um, got a piece of paper, drawn out the sheet with measurements, measured the boat and started planning my cuts in segments so I could make the most of the sheet with minimal wastage. It is a bit of planning and it does take a bit of thinking but it's worth it in the long run and it'll save you money because if you just get a sheet and start cutting segments out of it, you're gonna end up with a lot of offcuts. So when you're planning to do your boat, that's just a dry spot, by the way, um, where I've been sitting. So when you lay this on your boat, you could just lay one big sheet and have no joins. And I see a lot of people doing that, but I'm not a fan of doing that for multiple reasons. First is the ease of application. If you've got one big sheet, it's hard to handle um, and you've got more chance of stuffing it up. Secondly, with multiple sheets, you can create these nice lines which divert water to the back. So obviously you can see water will run through 
hit these channels and all, always run to the back. So it's a way of keeping this dry. Thirdly, if you damage any of these sheets, if you had one big sheet and you damage it, you could replace the whole sheet. With this, you can, if you damage that section, you just have to replace that section. And lastly, I think it just adds more lines to the boat. Looks pretty cool. And um, yeah, just adds to the look of it, I guess. So before we get started, this is the basic um, tools that you're gonna need to do it. It's pretty simple. Tape measure, pencil, um, a nice sharp Stanley knife, really sharp blade, and if can, cut onto a piece of plywood, not onto concrete, because you'll just blunt the tip. Um, so if you can, cut over a sheet of, con of plywood. I actually find it easier cutting with a decent pair of fabric scissors. Next thing you're gonna need is a sliding bevel. The kids have just drawn on this, so ignore that, but um, that allows you to take an angle. Take an angle and go with it for the for the for all of your cuts. So as you can see, in every, every angled cut is the same angle. So it allows you to transfer that. Prepping the surface, you're gonna need a scouring pad, some, um, some sort of alcoholic um, rubbing alcohol. These are isopropyl alcohol pads for medical purposes, but any kind of ethanol, IPA, rubbing alcohol will do the trick. And then a microfiber cloth to dry off the alcohol after you've cleaned the area. Now, if you are gonna be doing this on a cold day or um, humid conditions or at night time, then I recommend having a heat gun handy because you can dry off the surfaces before you stick it down. Just, just evaporates any moisture that will settle on the surface before you lay the adhesive because if there's any moisture there, it's not gonna stick properly. We just washed it down with hot soapy water, dried it off, and now we're just gonna score up the surface. Rubbing wipe for first aid kits and stuff like that. And this will just clean off the surface. See how much dirt comes off it even after a soapy wash. I just want to get rid of all of that. And you just want to get a clean microfiber cloth and wipe away any residue. I'd actually already started cutting out um, the stuff before I decided to make a video. And so most of these are pre-cut, um, which doesn't help you guys, but I will demonstrate the cuts on um, on other sections. I'm actually gonna, this is to go in the back of the battery box underneath the batteries, and I'm actually gonna cut a triangle out of that, once again, to direct that water to the back where the drainage is in here, and um, also make it easier to lay because I can't get this big sheet in there. Now, where possible, um, I find it's better if you keep this black trim on the edge, it just sort of feathers the edge a bit and gives less to catch on. Um, plus it kind of gives it a nice uh, finished look as opposed to this here. Obviously I was restricted by space. You don't want to go over any welds or create any air pockets when lay laying this because it, it may cause issues in the future and it may start to peel. So anywhere where there's a weld or there's a screw or a fitting or a gap, you just don't want to lay it over that. Um, obviously if you've got an underfloor fuel tank and you've got cracks along here, you're not going to lay it across that, you know, you're going to leave that gap. So. Um, you know, have some common sense when you're laying it. It's not that hard. Think about what you're doing before you do it. So, before I get started, I'm just going to use the sliding bevel to take the angles that I've used around the rest of the boat. That way everything flows to the eye and just keeps that consistency. So I've cut this to the size of the battery compartment that I need. So I'm going to go halfway and make a mark for the, the tip of the triangle. Seven, four twenty-seven, or thereabouts, and then use this sliding bevel to draw in my line. Now I've got this marked out, I'm going to cut along it and soften the edges and it cuts really easy. As long as you've got a good pair of scissors, 
go and buy a new pair for this. Don't use an old pair that are blunt. I think fabric scissors are really good. Now, the next tri trick is um, get a variety of sizes of bottle caps. This allows you to trace, get rid of the sharp edges that can peel, and you can trace around them to soften the edge, like so, and then you just cut that out. This is another reason why I like the scissors. There you go. Do the next one. You can choose whatever size bottle cap you like, I guess. Um, or you can just freehand it. So there's one sheet. You can see here, I, I'm gonna have to trim around here. So I think I might lay this side first and that's gonna dictate where over here I have to cut that out. So if you start laying one side, keep your distancing consistent and then trim out where I need to over here. What I'm gonna do is apply a whole bunch of pressure around here and you'll get an indentation from this rubber grommet on the back side of this, which you can trace around. So here you can slightly see, get the right angle, that indentation along here. So I'm gonna trace that with a pencil and cut it out. All right, so we've got our perfect cutout around the grommet in the corner, and we're gonna go ahead and start laying this now. So in here, I wanna leave a gap along the back so water can channel along because the drainage hole is over here. I don't want to butt it right up because it's going to block any water in these channels. So I want to bring it to this side so everything can run to the back and um, keep it clean in there. Once you've got it in position, you're just going to pin it down with dive weights. This stops it moving once you start peeling. So just start the peel. Put it where you want it. Press it down, then place your dive weights on the edge to stop it peeling. And then as you go, just smooth it out. Alright, so we've got those two stuck down now, and this one then comes in. I had to stop recording there because it was fiddly and I've only got one hand so I had to use two hands. You don't want to mess it up. Get it right first time. Nice spacing, allow water and dirt allowed through around the back. Channels to come across and padding for your batteries in the back there. Alright so we've got the dive weights pinning it down. Just going to lift it up from here. Start drilling this. back and lay it from the very tip first so you want to almost curl it over. Once you've got that in place you can move a dive weight up, lift it up and just run your hand along as you go. That's our first one laid. Nice and snug in there. Get your 10mm gap. Place your weight. Align the ridges. And just do the double check where you're laying it.
Move the dive weight over. When you're pushing it down, you just want to pay particular attention to the very edges because that's where it's going to peel first. And if anything gets underneath it, it's going to work its way under and you're going to have issues later on. So just really pay attention to the edges. You can't give it too much pressure. So just go for it for as long as you can, for as long as you want to. The more the merrier. You can't really overdo it at this point. Got pretty sunburned yesterday, so I'm just having a break lighting from the sun. That's that. I'm going to carry on finishing laying the remainder of it and then I'll just give you a quick once over once I'm done. I don't think I need to have you guys watch me do the rest of it. I've, I've gave a good demonstration of how to prepare the surface, how to make your cuts um, and how to lay it and also how to plan it out so you get the maximum out of your sheets without any wastage. Um, if you guys have any questions feel free to comment below. I might have missed some stuff or if you're having trouble doing it, you know, far away. I've done it multiple times. Obviously you can pay to have this done at a shop professionally and um, it's the same product but they just CNC cut it to fit your boat. So it does give a nicer finish but um, I'm paying probably 20% of the price just to do it myself. And it's fairly easy um, if you've got the know-how and um, you only need basic tools to do it. So I do recommend giving it a go. Blast through this, finish this off and then um, get set up for a mission tomorrow. You can see on the, the boarding step, you've got a nice 10 mil gap around the outside. That's actually underneath the grommet, just to give a better finish. And then your old bottle cap trick in the corner here to get cut around that. Same if you've got any fittings like this, um, you can just lay it over the hole, and then trim out the hole afterwards and then put the cup holders back in. It just gives a real nice finish. Um, bloody good. Easy as. Give it a go, guys.